Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Big Knit Energy YouTube channel. My name's Sammy and this is episode 39 of my knitting and spinning podcast. Um, today is Tuesday, July 4th. Um, normally I want to film until Friday but I will be flying to Washington on Friday and I work the next two days so um, figured I would just film my podcast and have an early one instead of a one that's over a week late um, and I have a couple finished objects and there's enough to show you so why not um anyways uh I have iced coffee here it's not a Starbucks coffee it's just coffee at home this is one of those little five dollar reusable cups I think I got mine cheaper than five dollars though but um I have fiber acquisitions, no yarn acquisitions, and I have two finished objects and uh, one new cast on and one weird whip. Um, I will also show you guys my spinning because I've made some good progress of that, but it's in a weird setup right now. So I'll just put a picture up when I start talking about it and uh, let's jump in. So my first, finished object is the Whitmore cardigan. Um, I knit this Whitmore cardigan. I don't, as always, I don't remember designer names, but I knit this Whitmore cardigan in a size three. And this is knit in the shorter body length with the bishop sleeves. So instead of having like a tapered sleeve throughout, it's um, or just a straight sleeve with a rapid decrease before the ribbing. And um, last time, I had finished the body and I had started one sleeve and worked through it till here. So I had made a lot of progress on the sleeve, um, but I was just avoiding knitting on it because I don't like knitting sleeves. And then I finished that sleeve and I started and finished this sleeve. This one only took me two days. So, I mean, it's kind of dumb that I always avoid it, but um, I washed and blocked this already and I just sewed on the buttons this morning. So, there's some natural shell buttons that I got off Etsy. And I really like this. The yarn got so much softer after washing it. Um, I used the unicorn like fiber conditioner. Um, and I think I was telling you guys that this 100% non superwash Cormo um, from Woolberry Fiber Co was like pretty rough. Um, but now that I've washed and blocked it, I actually think it's really soft. It's obviously not like merino soft, not like smooth like that, but it's very soft and not scratchy at all. Um, this face I don't think is available anymore. I got this from Aro, um, from Aro Knits and Pearls D Stash, and I think paid too much for it, but this is knit in the colorway Peachy Keen on the Berry Cornwall base, which is 100% non superwash US Cormo. It's a two ply fingering weight. And yeah, there's my finished object. So I can take the progress keeper out of it now. And she is a done. Oh, I also have a sewing finished object. I'm not gonna talk about this a lot, but this is the Sovi sundress. Uh, I modified it just to like kind of simplify it, but um, I knit the short version. It has pockets and knit it. I sewed the short version and um, I didn't do the right details. You're supposed to do like a, a lining or something and it looks nicer, but I didn't do that. I just hemmed it or whatever you call it. And um, it's not as nice looking, honestly, but this is in... Um, the Smoke and Mirrors colorway, is that what it's called? I think it might be called Smoke and Mirrors or Smoke and Ash. The Smoke and Ash color um, in the Spin Cycle Ice Dyed Cotton. But yeah, so there's two finished objects. Those aren't the two that I meant. This was one of them, but I'm going to fold this up because I will have to pack this and take it with me to Washington. All right, and my next finished object is a ripple camisole um, designed by Jessie May. I modified it a little bit, so I won't run out of yarn, 
but here it is. Um, this is also wash and blocked and I really really like this. Um, it is I think an inch and a half shorter in the body than recommended but it works on me because uh, I only plan on wearing with high-waisted things anyways but this is oh and the because I was gonna run out of yarn. The other modification is I didn't do those little back triangle things. I just went to um, the two middle parts of the of the back where the straps would be and instead of doing the little triangles that would be back there I just knit, started the straps early um, which is good because I only had two grams of yarn left <laughs> um, and this is where I was last time this progress keeper here it kind of blends in a little bit and um, I finished this unblocked it last week so I, I finished it only a few days after the podcast. This is knit in my hand spun, which was a fiber braid from Spin Delicious. Um, the colorway was Dreamland and it was on the Big Cozy Sock base, which is 80% Targi, 10% Bamboo, and 10% Tessa Silk. Um, I spun this as a three-ply fractal and it had uh, like 350 yards for four ounces. So there's that. Um, if you guys want to see like finished object photos, I'm gonna wear these when I go to Washington, so I'll probably get photos then and post them on my Instagram, which is at bigknit underscore energy. So you can go follow me there if you want to see finished object photos, or should I just try it on for you guys? I don't really feel like it. But it's cute. I'm gonna wear it with like a black high-waisted linen skirt or with overalls. Oh, and about the ripple cami, like I was... I made the strap shorter than it says to in the um, pattern just because I feel like I have a short distance from like here to wherever and um, I, I, I do like the fit. I don't usually like tank tops but I feel like that one comes up high enough and everything it, it's okay. <laughs> Still a tank top but it's okay and I will definitely wear it. To show off my beautiful yarn. Okay, my next um, whip. This is a new cast on. I have this in my CK Creations um, Dino Love Bag. And this is a. Oh, hold on. It's turned inside out. Um, this is a Ghost Whisperer, which uh, I talked about starting. Yeah, last episode and I have a few inches done uh, as rolling at the bottom but I am instead of knitting this in like a mohair or a surrey which I think is the way the pattern is written I'm knitting this in um, shibui pebble and this is shibui obviously doesn't exist anymore but this is in the colorway mineral and um, it is 48% recycled silk, 36% fine merino, and 16% cashmere. Um, that only doesn't feel like cashmere. Like, it doesn't feel rough or scratchy, but it doesn't feel that soft either. Um, and I would think recycled silk, fine merino, and cashmere would be really soft, but it doesn't feel that way. But this is 225 yard, or sorry, 224 yards for 25 grams. I think it calls it a light fingering, but 224 yards per 25 grams definitely is like a lace in my opinion, because that's the same yardage you get from like a mohair silk. But back to talking about this. This is knit on US 10 and a half. I'm just knitting it exactly to pattern. I think I'm knitting the second size. And um, it's the same size Park Knit I think wears. But I had already cast this on and knit like two inches before I realized that I was knitting it on US 10s instead of 10 and a half, and my gauge was really, really small. So I'm glad I noticed when I did and was able to rip it out and start over. But yeah, I, I really want to wear this over like my lilac dress that I showed you guys I sewed last week 
or the tank top that I just showed you guys and then maybe it'll motivate me to knit more tank tops if that makes me feel more comfortable in them so I can wear things like this over it. Um, I have two skeins of the the pebble so I have what 450 yards and I think that's enough for the size too. I don't have a lot to say about that yet. I hope to have it done next time I film so in like what a little over two weeks. I think that should be doable. Um, things that I haven't worked on are I haven't crocheted any squares for my crocheted granny square blanket, my scrappy one, and I have not knit on my habitation throw at all. So I won't be showing you guys those since I haven't made any progress. Um, what I did do is I don't know if you guys remember when I first got my circular sock machine from Dean and Bean, which I never use. Um, so if someone wants that, let me know. I'll sell it to you for a lot cheaper than you get them new. I've only used it like once, basically. Um, I have this sock tube and I have cut it in half, frogged part of it because it was really long and one end of it was kind of like wide where my tension was, where I was fiddling with my tension. So I cut it in half um, and I have knit a toe on one side and a cuff on the other. I have needles in to do the opposite on both. Um, and then I will use my new handy dandy sock ruler that I showed you guys last time and cut in some heels. And this is in the Yarnival Mermazing colorway. And this is on the plush sock, which is a 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon. And yeah, this color is so pretty. Um, I didn't think I was gonna like it. And then once I cranked it, I was like instantly in love with it. I love the way it pools. I love the colors. It's just really pretty. So. There's that. And uh, obviously this won't count for summer sock camp because it was originally a cranked tube. But I just figured I might as well make it. Um, oh, I'll ask. Sorry, that's probably loud. I'll also um, tell you guys about my stash down update, which is like not that great. <laughs> because my finished objects are one that I cast on in May, which was my Whitmore, and then. Uh, one with hand spun, which I didn't count in my stash anyway, so. But let's go through acquisitions first. Um, first thing is I'm not going to show it because I haven't put it together yet, so it's in pieces. Um, I got a Ashford drum carter with a fine TPI. Um, and I actually ordered that in the beginning of February, but they were back ordered through a manufacturer. Sorry, feeling a little funny. Uh, froggy and uh, so I'll probably make a video about making bats not like an educational one just like me trying it out since I've never made a bat before um, and other than that I'll show you guys some fiber so first up is from fossil fibers and this is the prickly Ugh. This is in the color Prickly Pear Blooms and is on an 85% Polworth, 15% Silk blend. And um, I just, I like this color and I thought I didn't, well, I don't, I don't have any fiber like in colors like this. So I was just trying to get something different and it is Tour de Fleece and I'm hoping to do a lot of spinning. And I really liked my, um, when I was spinning my nest fibers advent. Oh, I need to talk about that too. I'll talk about that after this. Uh, when I was spinning my nest fibers advent, I really liked um, the Polworth and Silk um, blends. So I wanted to try this from Fossil Fibers. I really, really like Fossil Fibers. Um, just overall, I like what they make and I like 
how helpful they are and I'm currently on their Tour de Fleece spinning team. So it's a super casual one, but they have a, a nice calendar to give some structure. And then the next thing I got is from Melly Knits. And I, last time I purchased from Melly Knits, I got a plain, um, well, not plain, but I got a like more solid natural color bat. I haven't spun it yet. Um, but I really wanted one of their colorful bats. She uses a super, super fine TPI, um, which is teeth per inch um, drum carter. And so she's able to blend up her sari silk so it looks like confetti cake <laughs> to me. Um, so I was able to get the color I wanted. Actually, I had to set an alarm and everything, but this is one of Melly Knit's ColourPop bats. And this one is Romney. Um, and it says Romney X Marshmallow. Um, I don't know if Marshmallow is the Romney or Marshmallow is something else, but this is the color. Um, it's more blue than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more neutral, but I think the whole thing leans kind of like tealish. I don't know if that it shows that way to you guys too. But that it, there it is. And this is 100 grams. Oh, it says Romney cross. Okay, so marshmallow is a Romney cross. Crosh. <laughs> marshmallow is a Romney cross breed um, from Blaine, Washington. And I'm from pretty close to Blaine, Washington. So that's another reason why I wanted this one. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. is from Green Goat Ranch and once I got the notification that my drum cutter was actually shipping finally um, I had been wanting to try out Green Goat Ranch fiber for a while and they had a lot of colors that I really 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 wanted um, even more than I got but um, I wanted them in braids and bats but they're that would kind of add up a lot if I got three of those um, whereas for quite a bit cheaper I was able to get these carding kits. Um, so I just have to do the actual carding and blending of them myself, um, which is fine with me. I, I, I wanna do that, I wanna make bats. But uh, there was one other color I wanted, which was, I think, lavender lemonade or something like that. Hibiscus, I don't know, something. But I got three carding kits instead of the four or five that I wanted. <laughs> and um, the, did I already say this is from Green Goat Ranch? I think so. But the first one I got is the Fruit Loops carding kit. And I really wanted the bat that was Fruit Loops. Um, I less wanted the plying pair because I just want the colors to mix more. So this is... Um, three ounces for $18 when I think the plying pairs is like $10 more. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's like 28 to like 30 something depending on if you get the plying pair or the bat that's already carded. And I can't remember the exact prices, but I do know this was a lot cheaper. Um, and this one has Rambouillet, Wool, Faux Cashmere, Firestar, and Nylon. Um, looks like the only fire star is the yellow at the top there, but I really, really like this and I'm excited to try to make a bat. This one, um, is in colorway, uh, La Vie and Rose and again, three ounces, $18. And, um, this one I wanted in the plying pair. I thought this would be a really pretty plying pair, but I'm more excited to make a bat. Um, and I'm more excited to spin bats than I am to just spin comb top braids. So this is really better. Um, and this is Rambouillet Wool, Faux Cashmere, Firestar, Silk, Nylon, and Bamboo. So this one has more variety in the, the colors that you can blend in here. Um, looks like the only Firestar is the bluey purple right there. And the last one I got is Frushi, and I was really obsessed with the Frushi bat and the Frushi flying pairs, to be honest. So this one is 
uh, Rambouillet wool, faux cashmere, fire star, silk, nylon, and bamboo. So I think that's the same mix that the Bubby and Rose was. And um, you have fire star here, and this is obviously the silk, but I don't really know which ones are which for the other ones. But very cute. I don't have a lot of just like pure pink. Um, I do have a lot of pinkish fiber, but not like, not, not with reds and oranges. So, uh, that is it for my acquisitions. Let me back step a little bit to talk about my spinning. Um, so I did mention I wanted to do tour de fleece and I have been participating. I have been following the, uh, fossil fibers calendar and talking to them in their discord group and i've also been chatting in the green goat ranch rivalry thread um i think you can be on two teams i don't really know why you couldn't be but i'm not really trying to get prizes i'm just trying to talk to people um and basically um I've been following the calendar, so I think on Saturday it was a 45 minute goal, on Sunday it was a 45 minute goal, and then Monday, Tuesday have been 30 minute goals, and I think tomorrow is a one hour goal, like a challenge day, I'm not 100% sure, but the theme for the fossil fibers calendar is um, deep stash, so like spinning through deep stash, and I've only been spinning for like nine months so i don't have a lot of deep stash really um but i am working on my lingering whip which is kind of the same um in my opinion like something lingering that just needs needs spun up whether it's stash or something i already started so i've been spinning on my nest fibers valentine's advent which i had just like completely lost steam on it was taking forever i couldn't like picture what the yarn was gonna look like um because of the colors, because so many colors and then so many different types of fiber in there. Um, so I was using my time goals to spin on the second bobbin of that. I was, I think about two thirds of the way through that bobbin. So I didn't have a ton left like in like comparison to how much I'd already spun, but it was still like a good amount of spinning in my opinion. So, um, Maybe I'll put a picture of how the bobbin looked before Tour de Fleece. I did finish that single. Um, so I finished the second bobbin, which was a single, and I started plying today. So I finished the single last night and started plying today. So um, I am planning on finishing plying that. I don't know how many bobbins it's going to take because I definitely overfilled the singles bobbin. So I think it'll take maybe three bobbins to ply. Um, maybe more. I'm going to try not to overfill them as much. And then I want to work on a Bewilderbeast bat from Fossil Fibers. I started it just barely. Um, and then wanted to try to power through the, the Nest Fibers Valentine's Advent. Um, I will not be getting Advents again. It's just not really for me um but it would have been better if i'd had the drum carter because then i could have made bats out of it but it's okay um let me show you guys the fossil fiber stickers i got all right so here are the squeep or square sheep stickers i got from fossil fibers because when you buy a, a raw fleece, it's packed in a box maybe, and you open it up and take it out, and it still it stays in the shape of a square. And these are just super cute. I love the art. I don't know who drew this. I should probably find out. But they're just really, really cute, and I love the colors. And what else was I going to get? Oh. Okay, last up is my June stash down update. Um, it's not looking too great, but it could be worse. Um, so like I said, I didn't have a lot of projects I was working on that counted towards this because I was doing a lot of scraps in hand spun. Um, so 
for June 2023, I started with 117. Um, I purchased the, what's it called? I purchased the, um, what was going for? I forget. Purchased this, this shark, shark themed sock set. Uh, it's called I Never Knew My Father. Um, and this is themed from Bruce. Bruce the shark from Finding Nemo. So I purchased that and I purchased two skeins of Pretty Twisted Yarn Fingering Weight Black. And um, that's for my granny square blanket for joining. And then I cast on a Ghost Whisperer. So I'm using up two skeins for that. So I have net positive one and I'm ending June with 118. I have a lot of faith and hope that I'm going to get start working through a lot more skeins in July because um, I don't have any like huge whips going right now and I'm going to cast on the shark set um, that I never knew my father sock set for sock week and I also plan on casting on at least a couple more um, summary tops so yes we should be net negative I don't have any like launches coming up that I know about that I'm like dying to get so hopefully we will net negative this month and make a big dent that would be nice um other than that that's all I have for you guys right now um I will see you in a couple weeks when I get back from Washington Maybe I'll film something when I go up there because I plan on going to spin cycle. I plan on um, going hiking and taking my drop spindle with me um, for Tour de Fleece. I plan on going to the farmer's market and I know sometimes they have fiber stuff there. Um, my sister's gotten me yarn from there so I don't know if they would have spinning fiber. And then there's also a yarn store slash cocktail bar I think. That I might go to so maybe I'll just do a general vlog or something I'm not good at vlogging though because I get really insecure so we'll see <laughs> but anyways until then bye